Hello, in today's video I'll be showing you how you can upgrade the graphics card inside your computer. So let's get on with it. Roll titles! <laughs> And welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade the graphics card in your computer. Now, before I get on with any of this, it's really important to note that there are so many different motherboards, so many different graphics cards, and all sorts of different obstacles and things along the way. So I can't necessarily help you with every single graphics card, motherboard, power supply problem going. If you're unsure about what's compatible with what and stuff like that, I'd advise looking online, maybe going to the Linus Tech Tip forums and asking a question on there. I know a bit, but I don't know masses. But this is just going to be a sort of general guide to hopefully help someone with a bit of computer knowledge or minimal computer knowledge to get through this process and hopefully be okay. So what's the graphics card we're going to be fitting today? It's this. <sighs> So this is the Asus Dual Overclocked Edition of the RTX 4070. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM and uh, yeah, you can overclock it. So that's probably not something I'm going to cover in this video today. But if you're interested in that, then maybe let me know and I might consider covering it in a future video. This is an upgrade on what I've got in my computer at the moment. At the moment, I've got an RTX 2070 Super with eight gigabytes of RAM. So this has got more gigabytes of RAM and also it's two generations ahead, which means that it should be pretty nippy. Now, graphics cards range in prices from the cheap to the ridiculous. This I would probably say is somewhere in the middle. This will cost you around about 600 pounds. Now, basically with this, I'm going to use it for well, that computer behind you. So I do a lot of video editing because I've got a YouTube channel, but also I actually use it in my day job as a designer. I do do a little bit of gaming on my computer and I do do streaming as well, but this is sort of here basically to encode videos and design stuff and everything like this. And I'm pretty certain this is going to be perfect for it. But as I say, you can get graphics cards that are a lot cheaper and a lot more expensive. So depending on which one you choose, there's lots of awesome comparison websites out there. I'll put one in the video description, which can help you sort of decide power versus cost and things like that, because that is quite important. What we'll do in this video is I'm gonna get this out of the box first, and then I've got to switch off the computer and take out the existing card and put this one in. And I'll show you that whole process. I'm not a graphics card specialist, there are a lot more channels that are dedicated to sort of reviews of things and stuff like that but i do know how to fit one hopefully so yes here it is now i actually plumped for this one because of its size which is something we'll talk about when we're actually messing around in the case of the computer but that is a really important consideration whether you've actually got space for a bigger graphics card because the really expensive ones can get absolutely massive and the slightly more expensive TI version of this is actually a lot thicker and it wouldn't go in my case. So you've got to think about what space you've got or haven't got and the power supply as well, but we'll cover that in a little bit. So uh, yeah, it's got an Axial Tech fan. It's got protective backplate, um, dual ball fan bearings. Can't have dual balls. That's what she said. And uh, yeah, it comes with some software to help overclock it. But as I say, I don't think that's gonna be something that I'm going to be doing in this video. Now, this is a card from Nvidia. AMD sell graphics cards as well. Intel do them as well. This is very much focused on this graphics card, but the processes are roughly the same, no matter what graphics card manufacturer you go to. Now, I've actually had this for a couple of days and it's just been sort of teasing me. I've just not had the time to film stuff. And so I'm actually glad that I've got the opportunity to get this filmed. There we go. Are we going to get any theatrics when we open this? I think some manufacturers make it so the graphic card pops up a little bit as you open the box. Do we get that here? No. But that is a big boy. Big, big boy. Unpacking steps. Packing steps. Interesting. Oh, okay, look. 
got that kind of shrink wrappy stuff on it. All right, I've got a quick start guide there. Got some more stuff underneath. We'll look at that in a moment. It's a thick boy. Um, kind of boxy thing here. Does that have anything in? Don't want to like yeet stuff away. No, that does not have things in. We can begin with yeeting. So there we go. Oh. That is the graphics card itself. It's wrapped in plastic. I'm going to keep it wrapped in its plastic for the foreseeable. It does have a little plastic protector on here to protect the edge of the graphics card. This is the bit that plugs into the motherboard of your computer. I'll keep that on for the time being, but yeah. So what have we got in here? So, so thank you for purchasing an ASUS graphics card. I think this is some sort of phone stand that you pop out. So let's just have a little look in the quick start guide. Pretty straightforward stuff. Edge of this card here, we've got the three DisplayPort monitor connections and also an HDMI out. So you can, in theory, run four displays off this single graphics card. Now, as you can see, it takes up two slots inside your computer. If you don't know what that means, I'll show you in a mo. But it doesn't, it actually takes up more. It goes into a third slot. Now, you can get graphics cards that take up three slots and then some. And uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a bit too big for my liking and too big for my current setup. With this, it should be a case of switching off my computer, taking it apart, removing the old graphics card and putting the new graphics card in. Now, because I'm going from an NVIDIA graphics card to another NVIDIA graphics card, I shouldn't have any problems with the display drivers because they're already there on my system. But if you're, say, going from an NVIDIA card to an AMD card, before you switch off your computer and start swapping things out, it's a really good idea to remove your existing drivers for your graphics card. And there's actually a utility, I think it's called DDU or something like that. I'll put a link to it in the description and that'll basically wipe your existing driver from your computer in readiness for you to install a new graphics card with different manufacturers graphics card drivers. But as I say, as I'm going from Nvidia to Nvidia, it doesn't matter for me, but that might be an extra step you need to consider if say you're swapping to an Intel graphics card or an AMD one from an Nvidia and all those different permutations. Now what I've done is to demonstrate the difference, hopefully, in speed between my existing graphics card and this one. So uh, yeah, I think what I need to do now is have a little shifty around and switch off the computer, plonk it on here and then film how you swap out a graphics card. So we've got a slightly different angle. Unfortunately, this camera is slightly in the way. Hopefully it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. So what we need to do first of all is get this rather reflective uh, glass side off my case and um, yeah, we can look inside and get more accustomed to it. Now obviously you might have a metal sided case and there might be some screws at the back. It really depends on your case. So here is my existing graphics card that we want rid of. Depending on when you last upgraded your graphics card, you may or may not have got power going to it. Now my one does because it's a relatively new card. Now obviously if your computer's quite old, you might not have these additional power connectors available. So it's probably a good idea before you order anything to double check that you've got these uh, power connectors because a lot of modern graphics cards require additional power directly to it like this one does. So yeah double check that you've got capacity and these kind of PCIe connectors spare in your case ready for your graphics card. Right, so now I've got to undo these one, two screws and then we can start thinking about pulling this out. There we go. Just whiz those out. And keep them to the side. 
Now this is really hard for me to show you because there's no space really to get a camera in down there. But where the graphics card goes into the slot, at the end of the slot, there's a little clicky thing that you have to press down to release the graphics card and make it rise up. So yeah, it's just sort of, I can see it just about here. If I press it down, it should make the graphics card lift slightly and um, make it so I can pull it out. There we go, existing graphics card removed. The new one is actually quite a bit shorter than the old one. The old one has got three small fans and this new one has got two big fans. And yeah, look, there you go. You can get a better look at that clippy thing that you have to push down. Now, what's really important when you're doing anything like this is you need to use a bit of force but don't go crazy because you could do a lot of damage to your motherboard or the graphics card. If it feels like something isn't going fully in or doesn't is a bit too tight, then just pull back and just double check everything because you could make a very expensive mistake. Right, okay, so to prepare our graphics card, we've got to take this cover off. There we go, and that's all the pins. And then we've got to remove the plastic from everything. So we've got some on the fans. That is a nice looking graphics card. This is quite important and easy to miss. There's some plastic on the back of this as well. interesting there's a little switch there for mode P and Q I don't know what that is I will investigate oh look and there's some more plastic on here as well take these guys out they're just designed to protect all the ports in transit so now it's time for the graphics card to go in it's sort of pretty straightforward for, for me in this one so although I do have a spare slot here where I could have got a graphics card that is three bays thick, it would then probably crash into this Elgato capture card that I've got here. So I don't really have the room. It's definitely worth checking the tightness in your case before you purchase anything because yeah, you might just not physically have enough room for it. Or even if you do have a third slot like I do, anything thicker than that will be crashing into the card next to it. This is in position and hopefully should just be able to click in. That clicked in. Perfect. Because this is actually a quite a tall graphics card, I've got to be really careful I don't drop the screws in the case. Lovely, that's, that's all working really well. So now it's just a case of plugging in these power connectors. It's really important to get the power connector plugged in. So if your graphics card does have an additional power connector, make sure you plug it in or else the graphic card won't work. Well, I've worked out what the Q and P means on the switch. It means you can run the fan on quiet mode and it won't spin. If it's on P, it means it's on performance mode and the fan will always spin even if the GPU is not getting overly hot. I think I'm gonna leave mine on P because ultimately this isn't in a bedroom. It doesn't need to be particularly quiet. So yeah, it's fine. So there we go, that is our graphics card installed. Maybe have a little bit of a clean, put the case back on and then get it plugged back in. So uh, back in a second. Well, we're up and running and yes, it's recognized that we've got a GeForce 
RTX 4070 installed. And yeah, it's just all sort of working as it was before. I don't think there are any driver updates. No, I've got the latest driver. Now, I mentioned earlier about running benchmarks and basically benchmarks are tests on your computer to see how it's running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one quickly, but we're not going to take the readings from that benchmark as like the definite ones because I'm recording my screen at the moment. That is using some of the graphics cards resources. And when I ran the benchmarks on the old graphics card, I wasn't recording anything. So yeah, I'm going to run them sort of almost identically so we can get a fair comparison. I hope that makes sense. So let's get 3D Mark open. And 3D Mark is basically a bit of software that plays some fancy graphics and works out how many frames per second the computer's running at. And uh, yeah, we can compare it to the benchmarks I did previously. Okay, so the benchmark is running at the moment. Currently, it's saying it's running at 42 frames per second, but this is just an example of a benchmark and how it looks for those of you who've never seen one before. So it's basically doing some really, really high powered graphics to test the limits of the graphics card essentially and see how everything looks and how it performs now remember i'm running this at its base settings at the moment i'm not overclocking it or anything like that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run all the benchmarks that i've done previously and then we can come back and compare and see if this upgrade has been worth it i hope it is Oh my God, I am over the moon with that performance increase. That is mental. That is so, so good. And that is just the base card. I think if we crank it up with some overclocking, we'll see some real differences as well. But I think that would just be too much for this video. But if you want to see me try it, then let me know in the comments, Then I'll and I'll do you an overclocking guide or something like that. So I hope you're able to upgrade the graphics card in your computer. It is relatively straightforward. You've just got to be really gentle when you're handling the graphics card and putting it in the computer and removing the old one. It's very rare nowadays that you get a graphics card that is completely dead on arrival. It does happen, so make sure you keep hold of your existing graphics card. Don't yeet it away until you know that your new one is working. But yeah, give it a go. It's fairly straightforward and the potential increases in speed and performance are just massive. So uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do let me know in the comments and also give me a quick thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't really mind. Anyway, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, it's game over.